So our crop is uh, rebrand and Miranda as a result of changing management, that being mainly myself, but also uh, finally putting together a portfolio of some more advanced properties in, in uh, yeah, advanced properties, I'm sorry, in uh, Columbia that um, you hear about prospect generators, they finally found something they don't want to give up part of. Well, we kind of think we're in the position of that on, on uh, three projects that I'll talk about. But um, uh, so the four lucky statements, all what I'm telling you may not be true or geologically mandated. Um, key management is me. I'm an old placer guy. Uh, I don't know if you know it, but there's a lot of good placer geologists running around that are still alive and still kicking. They, they found a lot of gold collectively. Uh, they're, they're good guys to work with. And they were also a John Anderson company now. I don't know if I um, promoted him to chairman or he did or an investor did, but he's essentially an acting or acting chair now. And uh, I don't know if you know John, but he's, uh, he's just an honest guy and um, a, a champion for whatever he's involved in. And he believes in his geologist and he believes, if he believes in the geologist and projects, he's, he's all in. Uh, just capital structures, we've, um, uh, we did a consolidation, so we're down to 36 outstanding. Uh, small amount of options because, and warrants because of the consolidate, or small amount of options because of the consolidation. Uh, I apologize, I don't have the average prices, but um, I'll blame it on our CFO. And um, fully diluted 57, and we just closed uh, two financings in April that accumulated $3.2 million. And we are probably going to do some drilling with that on one of these three projects I'll talk about. So um, the projects here to the south around Pasto, that's Nariño and Caco. That's down there by Equ in, uh, uh, near Ecuador, 40 kilometers from Cascabel. And uh, the reason we're down there is as soon as the security situation got acceptable, we knew where to go. And uh, uh, we, we had some contacts and we started acquiring down there because they really are tremendous. I mean, they're, uh, we don't know the economic uh, uh, status of what might be, but they're huge systems, both epithermal and porphyry, or porphyry with uh, persistent and, and uh, through-going epithermal overprints. So I'll talk about Kauka, which is, uh, I guess, our flagship. It has a resource um, on it that we're trying to enhance by looking at the epithermal veins that haven't been looked at. Uh, we have Santa Ana now, which is a colonial silver district. Um, the, the Spanish records have up to 17 kilograms of uh, silver in the late 1500s. And, um, and then we've got uh, reconnaissance samples in the database and drill in between 2.5 kilometers and uh, kilograms and 4 kilograms of, of silver. And then Majama is uh, um, a probably an intrusive, intrusive hosted and intrusive associated epithermal vein system and the, the footprint of the veins is, is over 100 square kilometers. So Calca um, has extensive epithermal gold silver. I'll show you a picture here, just beautiful Midas type uh, Hishikari Ginkoro veins, uh, gold, nominite, coarse gold, and then um, more of the carbonate based metal veins like in Barutica, and those will have gold, but they'll have up to 3% copper in them, overprinting a, a low grade porphyry. So here's where Calca is down in the mineral belt. It's a Miocene belt that extends there through um, Laramagua, through Cascabel, through Majama, through, which we have through Calca, and, um, and on up to uh, La Calosa. Is all the same age, basically all the same age, or within a plus or minus a million years, and uh, just noticeably big systems. So there on the uh, your right, that does not belong in a porphyry system. That's uh, that's basically gold, silver, uh, uh, gold, nominite, um, some adularia, banded quartz veins. Um, this, unfortunately, is pretty much parallel to core, um, so the, the meter intercept doesn't necessarily mean that much, but it's uh, uh, 1095 grams. And what I'll show you in some pictures of how the zones appears is you don't have a single vein. You have sheeted veins over up to eight meters. Um, 22,000 meters of drilling of the porphyry, 
uh, but it's a hundred to two hundred meter spacing, and so it just uh, the impossible to, to evaluate an epithermal vein system with that kind of spacing. And basically, what you have is it's an epithermal vein system hosted by a porphyry. Uh, the porphyry mineralization above uh, 300 uh, or above a third of a gram is uh, is over. 1.2 kilometers by 1.5 kilometers, and, and, that's, and that's open. There's a global resource of 700,000 ounces of 0.56 um, gold equivalent with uh, uh, silver and, and copper credits to the gold, and, um, and uh, about a third of that is in, a, in actually an optimized pit that the, that the vendor put together. So um, there's several things you can notice about the porphyry here besides its size is it has, it has good contours above, uh, you know, 0.4 grams to 0.6 grams, kind of in that, that northwest um, central area here. And it also has linearity uh, internal. And what those are, that's where they happen to hit a vein on, on that wide spacing and uh, you do a random uh, ellipsoid with a porphyry type thing and it picks up the grade and, and you get liniments. But what they are is actually um, likely as veins. Um, so the concept here is we are, these, these very low grade tonnages, um, the concept there here is to, to enrich this deposit by, by correctly drilling, delineating mod and modeling and grade modeling the veins. And there's a lot of tonnage to, to do that with. Um, the optimized pit is only about um, uh, taking at face value. It's kind of a frame of reference for us, but not much, not much more. But it's 31 million tons at uh, uh, 0.37 cutoff at, at half a gram. And um, so you can see that in this central area, you know, you don't have to you don't have to go, uh, you know, a huge increment of value to get it up to some interesting, uh, you know, one gram or one, uh, one plus one gram numbers, which I'll show you just some basic modeling and calculations we're doing to show that. Um, so, um, 0.3 grade shells, pretty much uh, homogeneous modeling of a, of a porpy type thing, but uh, epithermal veins all basically uh, 86 epithermal vein intercepts or, or sheeted vein intercepts in 18 holes and at uh, 100 to uh, 200 meter uh, centers you just can't evaluate vein system that way. So that's not a porphyry either. That's uh, uh, well I mean the, the wall rock to those veins are, are porphyry, but in the top photo you have uh, 40 meters, that's about a 40 meter distance with seven veins, two of them are over a meter, and then on the bottom you have um, uh, 10 meters of uh, sheeted vein zones, so that uh, when you're seeing um, intercepts like that in the core, it's part of a, of a you know, anywhere from a 10 centimeter to a Eight, me eight meter sheet of vein zone. And you can see if you put a hole down 200 meters on either side of this, you're gonna get porphyry uh, or you'll get some erratic high grades. What they did with it is they cut it all to six grams and, and treated it all the same. Whereas if you have a, a vein marching through it at uh, uh, meter wide or eight meter wide sheeted zone, that, that contributes a lot of grade volume to the deposit. So we tried to put together some uh, vein modeling early on. This is what we consider fairly high confidence. You can see that uh, basically you have high vein density where you have uh, good vein density. I don't know if that shows up very good, but high vein density here, high vein density here, high vein density there. And, uh, and again, what looked like some uh, continuous vein zones for over a kilometer and a half. Um, so 86 drill inter 86 intercepts of epithermal vein, of which um, 35 or above uh, 
over three grams or average 8.5 grams per ton over 1.76 meters. Um, we're, we're thinking at least 50% uh, uh, for, for true thickness on, on average or, or about a meter. And then there's an additional 51 intercepts of 1.7 to 2.9 grams uh, over two meters. And on, just on a rough average, the grade of the veins is 12 times what the grade of the porphyry is. So we call this our schematic vein model. Um, this is, we put together vein segments. Uh, on your right is in plan, in section, on, on the left is in plan. And uh, each vein segment is supported by one to three holes, but we just took an average trend uh, for modeling those. And in, in plan, maybe it's, it's probably not particularly conservative because they probably occur in, in echelons or braiding fashion. But in, in section, it's probably conservative because these veins all go to surface and they all go, go to the limit of drilling. Um, so I, I deliberately leave out the grades because this is not 43 101. Um, but ab above, you can see that we have a use set of three, five, and 10 gram cutoff. Above three, there's 7.7 .7 million tons of vein material. And, um, and whereas I use the eight and a half grams for just the, the average of the epithermal veins, I mean, it's much higher. So this is just a, a cartoon, you know, the, the veins are essentially a cartoon. I, I didn't try to, or we, we don't have enough knowledge uh, to know what it is, but we do know of just the schematic model of the vein segments. Um, you've got the 7.7 .7 million tons of, of, of plus eight grams. If you just do a simple weighted average up here above of uh, this being the porphyry grade, and this being the vein grades as a proportion, you can get that volume up to about 1.7 uh, grams, which starts making it attractive as a, as a bulk mineable target, especially of that size. And again, if you're, uh, it's proportional or inverse to the grade, if you can get these higher tonnage numbers up by incorporating the veins, uh, it's, it's potentially a big deposit. This is just the location. The reason I show this is that the um, this hill here is the essentially where the trace of the open pit is, and for a good part of it, it's zero to uh, zero strip ratio, at least for a good part of the first stages of the pit if it does go to to production. Santa Ana is um, again the. These, this quote is from a 43101 report from, uh, it was done for Condor Precious Metals. Uh, from the Spanish archives, they report um, 14 mines averaging uh, four kilograms silver per ton up to 17 kilograms over 1.5 meters. Um, most of what we see is actually from mines from the um, eight, late, eight, mid 1800s to the early 1900s and all the colonial mines, except for one that was reopened and uh, are fl either flooded or caved. So um, we're not really seeing the colonial workings to any great extent yet. Um, it's 100% owned. We did it with a share acquisition. It's in a historic silver district, colonial and pre-colonial colonial, colonial and, and mining at least up to, to 1920s. Um, highway, grid, power, no artisan mine problem. It's just right outside the town of Falan. And, um, and it's a pretty supportive environment for mining. They're actually doing a, a, a historic tourist park for, um, centered on the, on the old colonial mining. Mine park tour for tourists. Um, visible native silver, this uh, over 0.15 meters of a seven meter vein right there. He's point, the finger's pointing at 11 grams gold and uh, 28, 20 grams um, silver. On the right there, I'm sorry, the left, there's uh, 
uh, that's the the black outline is the concession it's almost 700 hectares there's uh, uh, six uh, veins that we've inferred or mapped and it uh, together they accumulate about seven kilometers of, of vein and the veins occur in vein packages to where usually you'll have two to four veins within a, a 15 to 20 meter um, interval so each one of these single veins stri uh, uh, lines actually represents multiple veins and the curious for Columbia they actually outcrop which is rare so this was done was drilling done by um, condor precious metals um, below sam below where that's this sampling here is with the uh, 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 the extreme high silver within a, a vein that probably averages a thousand grams and you can see the the gold equivalents um, in uh, eight holes uh, they did it from a, a fan uh, but all the holes um, hit the target so these kind of numbers uh, in the drilling are also in the in the mine about 150 meters above it this is just some representative sections there are, you can see the uh, the packaged veins three veins here over uh, about 15 meters and 20 meters respectively and again the um, values narrow, narrow values but between uh, 0.25 and, and 3 meters of up to 1500 gram silver Majama is uh, um, is a is a, is a probably the biggest vein system I've seen it's uh, both kind of low sulfidation and intermediate sulfidation it's uh, what's interesting is the artisan miners really um, revealed us the value of the project uh, there's basically non-selective mining of 23 grams gold for ton and those veins are uh, they're narrow veins typical for Columbia but they occur that footprint of that district is over 100 square kilometers uh, this on the, the the rock photos that's uh, I'll show you where this came from in a general sense but um, we've got 40 plus veins identified we've done detailed sampling in, in one development area that's kind of a cluster of four development areas and the face is going into unmined material or a uh, meter of uh, 36 grams gold and, and 210 grams uh, silver at the face uh, typically these guys have been mining these zones at you know a ton per day over over 50 years but they've probably in these some of these areas taken out you know 150,000 ounces about a seven to one uh, silver gold so it's again it's right down there in that Miocene belt of, of Cascabel um, giant and epithermal deposits in that trend and uh, I hope we're on the one but, but if but invariably there's going to be some big discoveries in that zone and, and this stuff that's just been able to be explored in the last probably two years two and a half years um, the vein system is high density here up in the uh, above uh, most of our claim block which is in black but that's because JICA in the 80s did a real intensive soil mapping and, and limited drill program basically that vein density extends on to, to our claims to or our concessions to the south and there's about four of those zones the um, it um, the, the grades are almost obscene is uh, almost everywhere you go on this thing um, is you have uh, the these would be face samples of mines that were active at, at the time of visit I apologize if they don't have uh, widths but um, recon samples underground between um, 73 uh, gram, 11 to 73 grams per ton gold and 75 to 1400 tons uh, silver and whether you see the vendors data set or our data or you see Ingeminus data everyone's getting those everywhere they go they get flashy numbers and what's interesting is rather than being a single vein this is where the JICA soil data came on to our claim um, 
the soils pick up subparallel uh, veins to where uh, you might have eight, probably eight to 11 veins uh, in that whole package or, or more. So even though you're, um, they're narrow veins, there'll be you know, groups of them that you can mine together, hopefully. We just, uh, this is the one area we sampled in detail, about 60 samples, and uh, there's actually, this shows levels below, there's actually ladder uh, raises above to where it represents about 200 meters of vein, where then it went off, pinched and went off into the wall, and you have about 40 meters or so by 30 meters of, of uh, ele uh, uh, vein development on levels above and below the haulage. But again, that, that's a non-selective mining. They're taken out and going to the mill 22 grams uh, gold. Um, this is 200 meters of a production level um, in this bombona zone. Um, similar with a grain of salt, similar mines are producing at the same grade. Um, sometimes they report it by recovery. Sometimes they uh, report it as um, what they think is total gold, but I mean, it's a, it's a 20 gram district. So here's where that detailed sampling comes from. There's uh, uh, four production portals here, each of them about 200 to 300 meters of development. They don't stope, they just go down and up and they, and they resume going on a level three mills, but this is an area where you could quickly come in and make those development areas that have been active for 40 years. You could probably make that into a, a, a reasonable size resource fairly quickly. And if you wanted to put it in production while you explored the, the entire district. Uh, we think we're gonna be announcing some new joint ventures for catalysts and opportunities. Uh, we're going to have trench and road cut sampling for Kalka. Um, we're going to have Newmont's resuming work on the JV of, in, on our Lear projects just south of Rudica. And they have some, some uh, very interesting looking uh, stream sediment anomalies that we know of already, so we'll be able to release that information. Um, right now it's private databases they own and, and they bought. Um, We'll integrate the surface sampling and vein modeling with Calca to get a more definite uh, story instead of schematic modeling. And then we will produce scout drilling at one of the three. We were hoping we could do it at Calca. We've had a little bit of a setback on some, on some uh, social issues that we want to take care of rather than uh, pound our way through. But at Santa Ana, we can drill uh, fairly easily and would expect some good high grade numbers in veins. And uh, once, as, as a rate we joint venture, we'll probably uh, acquire new properties. Um, longer term, uh, we hope to get some uh, secure, uh, some funding, uh, expression funding from a, from a major. We had a three year alliance with Ag Agnico Eagle up until 2013. They paid 70% of our budget just for a right to JV. They're down there talking again. They have, a, they have an office in Medellin. Um, Eventually, we'll, we'll get into Calca, not eventually, we'll get into Calca and do the vein delineation drill program. And some, at some point, we'll have a, a resource, probably first of the veins, where the veins are of highest density, and then also the expanding out for the porphyry from there to see what might be bulk mineable. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bid. How violent that term could be, it actually could be quite violent. Uh, it could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?